Welcome to our second PS Touch tutorial. Um, this time we're going to measure electrochemical impedance spectroscopy and look how the data is plotted in PS Touch. Uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy or EIS is a technique where a DC potential is applied to the working electrode and it is superimposed with an AC potential. Uh, the frequency of the AC potential is scanned and the impedance as well as the phase shift between the AC potential and the resulting AC current are uh, monitored. You can derive from this data important parameters as the solution resistance, the charge transfer resistance uh, or the double layer capacity. This is usually done by fitting the data to equivalent circuits usually with an external software. Uh, I will talk about that at the end of the tutorial again. The Amstead series is unfortunately not capable of performing impedance spectroscopy. Uh, this is why I'm using for this demonstrational video a PalmSense 3. The PalmSense series is starting with the 3 uh, capable of doing impedance spectroscopy. I will use it together with a Bluetooth extension. The Bluetooth extension can just be inserted into the auxiliary port of the uh, PalmSense 3. And then the PalmSense is switched on. You will see briefly on the screen a Bluetooth yes. And on the right lower corner of the screen, you can see this wireless symbol indicating that the PalmSense has recognized the Bluetooth dongle. Also, you see this blinking blue light indicating that the Bluetooth connection is ready but not yet connected. On the back of the Bluetooth extension, you can find the MAC number that will help us to pair this Bluetooth extension with our tab. I'm again going to use the Samsung Galaxy Tab 47 with a 7 inch display. Since I'm doing an impedance measurement I have decided to use the impedance spectroscopy dummy cell by PalmSense. This dummy cell has um, as a circuit First, uh, a resistor serial to two RC systems. An RC system is made from a resistor and a capacitor in parallel. And this cell should give us a nice and uh, interesting impedance spectrum. So I'm connecting this cell to the banana plugs of the uh, sensor cable. And the limo plug of the sensor cable is then uh, connected to the PalmSense 3. Now we're ready to start. I open PS Touch. And I press the connect button to connect the PalmSense. The Bluetooth extension is not in the list yet, so I scan for devices. Several devices appear. Thanks to the MAC number, I can choose the correct one. And I'm asked to pair. And I can pair the device with the code 1, 2, 3, 4. OK. OK. And I'm connected. So now we will look at the method editor to prepare our impedance measurement. We choose from the techniques list, of course, the impedance spectroscopy. For impedance spectroscopy, uh, um, you get high currents in the high frequency area 
and low currents in the low frequency area so it is smart to choose a broad uh, current range range so we just select all of them uh, as told before our sensor is the dummy cell uh, you remember most likely that the fields sensor and sample are for your own notes you can write in there whatever you like um, we don't have a sample so I will just clean this field then we look at the pretreatment settings I don't need any pretreatment for this measurement so I'm setting T condition and T deposition to zero and this step they will then be skipped now we look at the impedance spectroscopy settings the first one is the equilibration time uh, which is at five seconds and for an um, for an demo circuit this is more than enough time for any capacitive current to decay the next point is a scan type we offer three different scan types uh, we offer the potential scan where um, you can uh, repeat your impedance measurement for different DC potentials. This might be useful if you want to look for uh, still for the right potential uh, for your proper impedance spectrum. Usually the OCP is chosen or uh, values close to. Then we have the possibility of a time scan. A time scan uh, it means that you repeat your impedance measurement after a certain time interval. This is interesting if you want to observe the change of your working electrode with time. We're going to choose the fixed potential because that's the classic way of doing it. Our fixed potential, the EDC, will be zero volts because that's the OCP of a demo circuit. As uh, amplitude, so as EAC, we choose um, 10 millivolts, uh, typical values for, for impedance spectroscopy uh, EACs are between 10 and 5 millivolts. Also other values are possible depending on your experiment. Next we can choose which frequency type we want. If we want to have a fixed frequency, so only do a single point of the spectrum. Uh, this can be useful if you only want to observe, for example, a single frequency with a change of potential, then you would choose scan type potential scan or uh, the change in time. But to get a full spectrum, we need to choose uh, the frequency scan type, meaning that different frequencies will be measured and so we get a full impedance spectrum. You can choose to pre-treat pre each frequency. If you want to pre-treat each frequency, it means that before each point uh, a pre-treatment step will be done. This can be necessary if your um, system is very unstable, but usually your system is stable during an impedance measurement because almost no, um, well, the currents are an AC current. So the next point is the end frequencies. This is how many frequencies, 50 frequencies measuring uh, is fine. It also means how many points will be in the spectrum. Keep in mind that more points mean a better resolution, but also a longer waiting time, especially for the lower frequencies. The maximum frequency the um, palm sense can handle is 50 kilohertz. For this measurement, a frequency of 20 kilohertz is uh, sufficient it will give us the complete spectrum of this um, equivalent circuit uh, the minimum frequency that the palm sense can handle is uh, 0.1 millihertz we don't need to go that low uh, we will just choose one hertz because uh, as lower the frequencies go the longer the measurement will take with one hertz one sine uh, sine wave takes one second with one millihertz, one sine wave takes thousand seconds. So we're choosing one hertz. Um, the last two points are the minimum sampling time and the maximum equilibration time. So the minimum sampling time 
is the time that at least data is collected before averaging is done. Uh, there are two conditions, either uh, the minimum sampling time is expired or uh, at least two sine waves are accumulated. At high frequencies, usually the minimum sampling time will be, will be the criteria because um, multiple sine waves can be accumulated before the minimum sampling time is done. At low frequencies, it takes quite a while until you have two sine waves collected. So. Uh, there then the criteria will be to have at least two sine waves collected. This means the time is determined by which of these criteria take longer. The maximum equilibration time determines how long um, the system waits before it actually starts with the sampling. The two criteria for that are five sine waves or the maximum equilibration time, which one is reached earlier. So at high frequencies, um, five sine waves ta take very little time, so most likely uh, this criteria will kick in. Uh, for uh, lower frequencies, it takes very long to make a single sine wave, so after the maximum equilibration time, the system will just be uh, sampling, uh, although there weren't five waves collected. The last point uh, is again the post measurement settings with uh, where you can set the cell on after the measurement. We don't need this so we leave this unchecked. On the top right of the method editor you see the estimated measurement duration and how many data points we will measure. This time is now 1 minute 30 seconds and we're pressing the run button to start. We see immediately that the plot window changes. What is the same is we see again the uh, progress bar on the bottom of the screen. Um, but we see that two curves are now plotted parallel. On the left y-axis you see that the circles are the logarithm of the impedance. And on the right y-axis you see that the triangles are the negative phase. These are both plotted versus the logarithm of the frequency. Uh, this is the border plot. This is a rather common way of plotting impedance spectra. And you also can notice that the uh, points are taking longer and longer when the frequency is getting lower and lower. If you want to know at which frequency you are right now, you can see that in the status bar. Um, so above the progress bar, you can always follow at which frequency we're measuring right now. So for example, we are now at 3.363 Hertz. Now we we'll wait until the measurement is finished. And the measurement is completed. Now when you look at the graph, you also uh, will uh, see that in the graph menu, on the upper left where we have the three buttons that we uh, well where we have two buttons that we already know and a third button that is new the first button is again the um, full scale button that just uh, sets the win uh, the window on an auto view that your curve fits in and the settings are the same settings as we already know from the first video the third button is new and this is this is the plot mode for the impedance data there are a lot of ways of plotting uh, EIS measurements. Uh, the most common ones are the Bode plot that we have done right now, and the Nyquist plot, which I will show uh, very uh, soon. Uh, other uh, possibilities are um, to plot uh, the admittance, or to, um, if you if you have measured a series of impedance uh, measurements. Uh, with uh, changing potential or changing time to plot versus that. Now we will open the Nyquist plot. At the Nyquist plot you see 
that we have plotted the imaginary part of the impedance versus the real part of the impedance. So these two axes have a relation to each other. They are together an imaginary number. So you see a fourth button in the plot menu and when you press that the scale of both axes is um, made the same which is the way an imaginary number should be plotted. So we see now two nice semicircles which uh, are coming for, from the two different RC systems. So uh, as mentioned before to extract the important parameters from these graphs you would need to export this data to um, to another software. A very popular is the software ZView. PS Trace has a one click to uh, ZView export where you can with one click just export your data to uh, ZView and do your uh, fits to equivalent circuits and equivalent circuit design. Um, but we also support the free software uh, EIS Analy Spectrum Analyzer. Uh, there's also a one click uh, export button in PS Trace for that. And if you click on that while you haven't installed the EIS Spectrum Analyzer, you get the link where you can download the software. Um, to do that, you will need to share your data and uh, uh, open it in PS Trace. Uh, PS Touch doesn't offer this yet. Uh, we have seen in the first video, we just press the share button and choose the app we want to use for sharing the data. So for example, you can choose your Dropbox and just uh, copy your data into your Dropbox folder and use it on your PC. And this already uh, concludes our PS Touch uh, tutorial video about impedance spectroscopy. And um, please look out for our next video and thanks for watching.